Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name is Christina and in this video we'll continue from where we left off last week where we basically made the base mesh for Zero Call in Blender and this time add lots of fur through optimizing the mesh with Quadraflow, add in finer details, do some vertex painting and make our little critter ready for rendering. Before I start showing you the full zero call process, I want to show you guys my workflow for optimizing meshes. Since I wanted to work non-destructively on the fur and keep the base mesh separate, I duplicated the base mesh, used Quadraflow, which is basically a quadra mesher, meaning it will create a lower poly version of your model, which is less memory intensive and better suited for, for example, game engines. Of course, I'm just using it as a way to reduce the overall poly count, which will make sculpting much faster. So putting the mesh through the quadra mesher, when I switch to wireframe mode, you'll see the difference right away. Now you're probably thinking, why the heck would I want a shittier version of the original model? Well, you see, if you go to the low poly version, add a multi-resolution modifier, then a shrink wrap modifier, just make sure the multi-resolution is at the top. And in the shrink wrap, use the eyedropper tool to select your high res model, then hide it. You'll see that the high resolution model is now projected onto the low poly model. And if you choose to res up the multi-res modifier by, for example, adding a subdivision, we'll get back all of our details. Warning though, don't go too high or Blender might crash on you. It did a few times on me. I found that one subdivision was actually enough for zero call. We can go up or down a level as we please. And if we're happy, we can apply the shrink wrap modifier and all that information will be stored in the multi-res modifier. That means we can delete our high resolution sculpt and we'll have a blender file that is lighter in memory and a mesh that has a better topology overall. And since we'll be working on the first separately, we can turn the preview down on the low poly version while we do just that. Blender will just function much quicker that way and you'll have a better sculpting experience overall. So, for the fur, I repeated this exact same process. I copied the low poly version of the base mesh, went into sculpt mode, and choosing the filter tool, I scaled down the model and made it much smoother. The model is now underneath our original model, and with Dynamesh turned on and the snake hook brush chosen, we can now start pulling out hair wherever we need it. I was thinking that the upper chest, shoulders and arms, as well as the thighs would have long hair, while the rest of the body has shorter hair and we'd pretty much just leave this area alone. You've probably noticed that the head was suddenly more detailed, so let's jump back a bit. Before adding all of the fur, I wanted to get the base mesh to a decent stage in terms of detail. You see, once you remesh and use the multi-resolution modifier, you can't work with dynamic topology anymore. So if you want to add anything to a model, like a horn or something, you better get that done in this stage while you can still use dynamic topology. Once you're happy with the base and don't want to add anything more other than detail, that would be the right time to move on to the multi-resolution modifier. Of course, you can use the dynamic topology to add finer details, but once you hit a certain poly count, Blender becomes very laggy and difficult to work with. So for the head, I paid very close attention to the Fox references I added in and basically used clay strips, pinch and the smooth brush to add in those smaller details. As I started zooming in for final details, I increased the resolution number in the dynamic topology tab under the brushes panel. Just remember the higher the number, the higher the detail, but also this will increase the face count and make Blender run slower. So make sure to only add high resolution where needed. Since we're just going to see zero call from just one angle in the final render, I mostly added detail for what was going to be in the camera view. 
There's no point in like adding detail where you won't really be seeing it, to be honest. I used the masking brush here to mask off parts of the ear because I wanted to have a sense of overlapping shapes. This is a principle used in illustration a lot. If you want to create a bigger sense of realism and depth in your image, or a sculpt in this instance, creating overlapping shapes is essential. This is a principle that is heavily emphasized in, for example, figure drawing. Especially when adding in light, the shadows will really make the object, or in our case, creature, feel like it exists in three-dimensional space. In the reference images I have up, I was trying to see how the light was interacting with the form and what happened when the form turned away from us. Skipping forward a bit, I used some hair tuft alphas to speed up the fur creation. The way I was using it was going in strong, so literally with a fairly high strength on the brush, then with a smooth brush and the standard brush, flatten and build up the different sections. Now this type of fur isn't fully realistic, I know, but I wanted to create a somewhat stylized look. I felt like it suited Zero Call pretty well. I know it's super easy to get carried away when you have these type of alphas and you can kind of add in for it very quickly, but I try to kind of keep myself from going too overboard because you want to have a nice balance of rest areas and then detailed areas. So you need to kind of be selective with that. So you need to figure out where you want the focal point to be in your skull. Because if there's detail everywhere, then there's detail nowhere, <laughs> if you know what I mean. You need to kind of find that balance. Here's an example I was following style-wise. Note where the artist has chosen to create rest areas for the viewer's eyes, but draw our eyes to the more detailed areas, which acts as the focal point. This type of balance is something you learn the more work you do, so don't feel too bad if you don't fully grasp this concept just yet. Skipping forward some more, here I started adding some more fur to the legs, just same method as before. So using the underlying mesh underneath our detailed mesh, but using the inflate brush and smoothing it out and creating a type of layer on top of the high resolution mesh. And using the alphas like I did previously on the shoulders. As you just saw, when I was happy with the fur, I masked the important fur areas, used Mask Extract and created a copy, mirrored that over and using the Pose and Snake Hook brush, I adjusted the mesh to fit on the left side of the sculpt. This was to avoid sculpting the exact same thing on the other side and just saved me a lot of time. We won't be seeing that area too much anyway, so I didn't need to be super precise. I know it's quick and dirty, but I literally had only two days to finish this sculpt, so drastic times calls for drastic measures. <laughs> this was the final detail stage. I used the stroke method line to add some more details on the cactus bit on the back. Unfortunately, I didn't record this process, I'm sorry guys. And I added some more details to both the hands, fingers, and feet. Once the mesh looked alright, I went up a subdivision level on the low poly main sculpt, adjusted the spikes a bit, made sure everything looked good in the camera view, and started the process of a vertex painting. Now, when you want to vertex paint a sculpt, you'll need to create a new material and in object data, scroll down to vertex colors. This will be the main layer you're working on. So if you want a completely new layer, press the plus button and make sure to have it selected. Go into vertex paint mode, choose your color and just start painting. 
For this to show up in the rendered view, open a new window using the plus button, go into shader editor, press shift A and in input choose the vertex color you are using. Connect this to the base color of the principled BSDF shader and done! I basically stuck with the colors Omerjan had established earlier and just had a lot of fun painting. All of the hard work was done so I could just kick back and paint mindlessly. In the principled BSDF shader I could choose how matte or glossy I wanted the fur to be, which was very useful. I gave the eyes a bit of a different material altogether though, because I wanted them to be a bit more reflective. And we are done! How cute did Zirocal turn out though? I think he's absolutely adorable. Just look at that face! Oh, I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. Once I added in the paint, he just became 10 times more cute. <laughs> I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. I've been trying to make these videos more educational rather than just a sped up process video. So if you like this format, make sure to let us know. Make sure to check back in next week because Omerjan will be painting over my zero call render and I just cannot wait to see how that'll look. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching guys. Bye!